Muted. Um, all right, um, so maybe uh, let me cover uh, a few things before we get started. Uh, my name is Andreas Libering. Uh, I'm senior consultant uh, at Patent Site. Um, and uh, I'm joined here uh, by uh, Dong Yong Kim, who is consultant at Patent Site, who um, uh, heavily supported me in uh, setting up uh, the analysis you will see uh, in a few moments. Um, uh, please feel free uh, to raise your questions uh, during the webinar in, in the uh, Q&A in the Q and A feature. We will collect them and then uh, collectively answer them um, with uh, the follow-up you, you will get about this webinar, which will also include a link to uh, a download of the copy of the slides. And also um, you will get a link uh, which uh, will make it, uh, will, will, which will make a download available uh, for you of the recording of this session today. All right, so um, let's get it started. Deep dive uh, into Alzheimer's disease I, uh, IP. Uh, landscape, uh, maybe we should start a little bit talking about Alzheimer and why we have chosen this topic. Um, every 65 seconds, someone in the, S, uh, in the US develops this disease. And uh, today, one in three seniors dies uh, with some sort of Alzheimer or another dementia. So we see that uh, huge costs will arrive. Uh, for example, in the year 2018, the cost uh, of Alzheimer and other dementias were around 300 billion US dollars. And estimations say that by the end of 2050s, uh, 50 of these costs could get uh, as high as 1.1 uh, 1 trillion US dollar. So huge, of co huge costs coming up there but also a huge market, uh, a lot of money to earn. And um, the question we're asking today is who's most likely to be the next or who be the big player in Alzheimer. And um, to answer this question today, we will look at um, patents, uh, at patent information, because patent information can give you really invaluable insights on uh, corporate portfolios um, of companies. Because um, when you develop relevant technology, you will file patents on this, um, uh, patent and titles uh, you um, to the exclusive right or exclude others uh, for making, uh, using or selling an invention. And um, uh, with the patent law, you will be able to uh, success or sell commercially successful products um, exclusively for up to 20 years. And um, today we want to have a look who are the big players in that field and who might be the ones uh, being able to sell these commercially uh, successful products from an IP perspective. Um, yeah, um, so let's have a look at how normal or classic patent statistics work here. Uh, on the left side, you um, you see an analytics report for uh, from an um, uh, patent office and um, what you see here is you see uh, general uh, or like really classic analytics via priority here and the number of patent families which have been filed um, and what we see here that it's slightly decreasing in the last years however um, we say we at patent sites say that these patent, uh, classic patent statistics are incomplete in regards to a few um, few points and these points are that these cl classic patent statistics do not take into account world, uh, do not take into account worldwide patent data um, they most of them do not consider uh, any legal status information whether a patent is pending or active or if it's even lapsed or inactive um, these analytics rather focus on quantity instead of quality and um, we do not see any or very basic applicant and um, company harmonization. So uh, let's have a little bit a look into these points and uh, how they can distort these, these kind of classic pattern statistics. Uh, the first point is um, um, a lot of uh, analytics, for example, only look at patents which are patent families which have been filed at the WIPO. 
and exclude everything else. If you would do this in, in, in the field of Alzheimer, so what we did is we basically took the search string, uh, which was provided by this patent office, and we had a look um, at uh, pat all, all the patents and the ones which have been filed, also filed at the WIPO and the missing data. And what you can clearly see is that you would miss more than 50% of uh, relevant patent information at Alzheimer if you only look at patents which have been filed at the WIPO, which is quite, not even quite, which is definitely uh, significantly. Um, next point uh, was uh, the information about legal status or the legal status of a patent. Um, we at Patent Size say only the legal status or among other points, the legal status is or information about the legal status is crucial to evaluate the actual value of Alzheimer IP and also of uh, about corporate portfolios, how valuable they are. Because what you see here in this pie chart is that more than 50% um, of uh, worldwide patent data uh, filed in the field of Alzheimer is inactive today and only like 3,500 uh, um, of these patents or patent families are active or in force today, which means granted and active today. Uh, while uh, 1,500 patent applications are, wait, uh, are awaiting their, their grant event. So also um, really crucial information to evaluate Alzheimer-related IP. Um, so let's have a look how um, this picture we saw in the beginning would change, uh, taking uh, as a first step taking um, worldwide patent data into account. You see that we definitely see way more information and especially in this in the last year, we actually see a rise uh, until 2016. We see a, a rise in um, uh, filing activities. Um, of course, the last two years, 2017, 18, these are uh, sub uh, subject to change as it takes a while until um, patents get, um, or these 18 years until a patent gets uh, published by a, pa a patent office. So, way more data we can have a look at. And another, the, uh, another information we will include is the information about the legal status, what we can see here. So we're slicing this bar by uh, the legal status of patent families. And especially for all the patents, you can see that most of them are in, inactive today. And when we're going forward to like 2013, 15, 17, you can see that uh, pending patent applications are exceeding in numbers. And also, um, that's, but that's only like a really minor point, but also important um, to, to focus on relevant or up-to-date relevant patent data. A lot of um, classic patent analytics or patent analyses, they say, okay, we just want, uh, we just look at patents which have been filed after year 2000 or after year 2010 and so on. But you can clearly see that there are some patents which have been filed before the year 2000, even before 99, which are still active today. And the, the, uh, these patents also can contribute to, uh, to the value of a corporate portfolio. So it's important to take them into account as well. Then one really crucial step and uh, probably is uh, uh, an aspect all of you are painfully aware of, it's it's painfully difficult to uh, identify the current owner of a patent. Um, and uh, most of classic patent analytics or statistics, they only look at uh, the original applicant and do a basic harmonization. The problem with um, the, the raw data of patent offices is that the quality is insufficient. You have incomplete ownership information, outdated reassignments, uh, you have unclear corporate structures, so it's really difficult to uh, determine the uh, actual or the ultimate owner of a patent, how we call it. Also, um, you have a lot of errors uh, in this data, um, especially in regards to wrong translations and misspellings, um, especially uh, when you uh, use translation from, from Chinese patents and also, um, for example, Russian patents. And how we solve this problem is we have a big team uh, sitting here in Bonn and also in some international locations which do uh, data harmonization. They do ownership harmonization and also they do patent ownership 
tracking over time. So we definitely, or we know when a patent has been owned or when a patent is owned by which specific company. So when you go to our system, to our VI, which I will show you later on as well, you can be sure if you search for a patent, you will find all of, if you search for a company, you find all patents which are actually owned by this company to at the end ensure highest data quality, which is absolutely essential when evaluating patent portfolios. All right, and now we're looking at specific patent portfolios. And uh, one point uh, I mentioned earlier is that most of these classic patent analytics, they rather look at quantity instead of quality. Um, so um, just to give you an uh, idea what I'm talking about here is we have two portfolios, A and B, and uh, or until recently, or a lot of companies or institutes still do this today, just measuring um, the, um, uh, the strength of a portfolio based on the quantity, so the number of patent families which are included in one portfolio. But we say we need a dimension here, and also counting patents is not an option. So we need another dimension in evaluating patent portfolios, which is quality. Um, because if you apply quality those, to those portfolios, a totally uh, different picture might arise. While patent uh, portfolio B is higher in quantity, we see that portfolio A is higher in quality. And uh, at the end, portfolio A might be as strong as portfolio B. And for this um, evaluating of, um, of patents and their, their, uh, their individual strength, um, until recently, these patents were almost exclu exclusively evaluated by individual assessment. And of course, this individual assessment, <clears throat> I'm sorry, is very time consuming, costly and in inefficient. That's why PatentSight developed, um, I just go one step ahead already, developed um, a unique algorithm to, um, uh, or big data, big data algorithm to evaluate um, the, the individual strength of patents, which is called the competitive impact. Um, the competitive impact is uh, our indicator uh, for the strength of a patent, which is based on two uh, sub-indicators, which show high uh, correlation in scientific literature with the actual value of a patent. This is technology relevance and market coverage. The market coverage is a citation-based indicator, so what we do here is we count the forward citation from later on filed patents for each individual patent. And uh, we apply a few corrections here. Uh, first, we do not simply, or we do not simply um, take the number of citations a patent received, we apply some corrections here. And the first correction is um, we're correcting from, for patent office practices because simply uh, different patent offices cite uh, more often than others. For example, the USPTO files more often. Mm -hmm. um, um, also, we apply uh, for the age simply because patents which have been which are older, longer on the market can receive more citations, and we apply for the technology field as we see different uh, citation practices in different technology fields. Um, then we have the market coverage. Um, the market coverage um, looks at the size of the patent, um, and uh, we're looking at the market this patent is protected. As you know. Uh, patent is a territorial right, so when you want to protect your technology, you have to file in each country where you want this uh, technology be, uh, to be protected. Um, what we do here is we do not simply uh, take the number of countries, uh, we weigh these countries by their market size. And as a proxy for the market size, we take the gross national income. Um, and uh, we benchmark this, or what we do then is we take the sum of all gross, gross national incomes, uh, patent or of countries and patent families uh, active in, and we benchmark this to the gross national income of the United States. This is uh, our market coverage. What we do then is uh, we multiply both indicators to uh, result in the competitive impact. Uh, we uh, multiply or we, yeah, we use multiplication here for several re reasons. I would say the most obvious one is to make sure that patents which are inactive today uh, do not receive any competitive impact as uh, the technology relevance of uh, that patents will be further calculated because 
Uh, also, that patents can be prior out uh, to subsequent patents. However, the market coverage would be zero. If you multiply something by zero, um, the result is still zero. So then we have the competitive impact. And um, to then evaluate the strength of a whole portfolio or a whole corporate portfolio, um, we look at all the patent families which lie within portfolio uh, within the portfolio. Um, we take uh, the sum and then we look at uh, their competitive impacts and we simply take the sum of those competitive impacts. And uh, then we, result, uh, we have the patent asset index, uh, index, which is our indicator of the strength of a portfolio. Um, while when we talk about competitive impact, we rather talk um, about uh, quality or the average quality of a portfolio. All right, so let's apply these aspects or these things we do differently um, to uh, the IP related or uh, Alzheimer related uh, IP landscape. So what we he see here on the left side is um, we see um, the original applicants of patents, um, which uh, and these are sorted uh, by portfolio size. Also, we included inactive patents here, and we see that uh, Hoffman uh, La Roche um, is the strongest player in that field, having roughly or a little bit more than 300 uh, patent families in that field, which can be active, which can also be inactive. Then we have Merck, Pfizer, and so on. I see AstraZeneca uh, and all the way down the University of California. So let's apply our concepts. Um, just looking at uh, active patents today and also looking at the quality of those patents or the joint quality of those patents, which we will see now here on the right side. Um, so on the right side, uh, these graphics or this graphic is sorted by the ultimate owner. So within Roche, you have all the different applicant names, which site or which, not site, but which file patents for the ultimate owner Roche. So here you see, for example, Roche, uh, Hoffman LA Roche, F Hoffman La Roche AG. <coughs> so you have these different spellings uh, within our software. They also are already included in the ultimate owner Roche. Um, what's all already and, and sorry, this graphic is also sorted by the patent asset index. So sorted by the corporate portfolio strength of the uh, of those patents. And uh, what we see here, what I think is quite interesting, is for example um, that uh, companies like Eli Lilly are jumping from like ninth place to fifth place, and also. Uh, when we're looking at the quality of the patents, there are companies showing up which were not even on the list uh, on the left side. So, uh, for example, we have GlaxoSmithKline here, um, we see Takeda Pharma, and also we see some other companies like um, Elan Farm, uh, which uh, I think in a, in a joint venture or in a joint company with uh, Perigo, um, they're not on the list anymore as a problem. Like for one reason, they um, decrease their portfolio size here, or a lot of those patents once owned by Eli like, are inactive today, and they don't show really high quality. Um, also, uh, we can have a look at the total patent asset index of that field, which is like roughly uh, twelve thousand uh, six hundred. Um, and so we can have a look how, for how much these top ten companies account for uh, in the overall. Um, in the overall Alzheimer field, which is like roughly, um, um, I think it's like six, uh, 30 thirty percent. So still a lot going on on this market. Um, as a next step, uh, so now we're looking at the patent asset index. Of course, we can break down the patent asset index to its subcomponents, like competitive impact and portfolio size, to look at the strategic position um, of the companies. So I'm going forward one more slide. And uh, what we see now here is, is our famous um, quantity versus quality bubble chart, where we can get an idea of the strategic position of each company. On the x-axis, 
we have the quantity, which is basically the portfolio size. So the number of active, now we're talking about active patents, um, of active patents which lie within one portfolio or each portfolio. Uh, also, I forgot to mention this, we're looking here at the top 10 companies in terms of patent asset index from our point of view in uh, Alzheimer related IP. Um, on the Y, so where we have uh, quantity on the X axis, uh, we have the average quality on the Y axis, uh, which is measured by uh, competitive impact. And um, what, we, what we see here is, for example, that Roche, a big blue bubble, has the highest ever, uh, the highest quantity, so owns the most patents in the field of Alzheimer among the top 10 patents. Um, however, uh, if you look at um, the yellow bubble here, uh, which is Eli Lilly, they have a way smaller portfolio. However, the average quality is much higher uh, of this portfolio. Nevertheless, because of the size of the uh, Roche portfolio, um, the resulting patent asset index for the Roche portfolio is the strongest. So you see these bubbles, they have different sizes and um, the bubble area or the size of the bubble is an indicator for the patent strength, which is like a, uh, a result out of uh, portfolio size and average quality. Um, yes, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, I already talked uh, about the legal status um, of patents, uh, how important that is, and also um, that we track the legal status of patents over time. So we can tell when a patent has been active and when it has been inactive, which makes it possible to, let's put it that way, travel back in time and have a look at patent portfolios, how they looked five years ago, 10 years ago, and also looking at trends. So um, that's what we're, going to, uh, what, what we're going to do now. So on the, um, uh, on the x-axis here, we have the so-called reporting date. In contrast to, for example, a filing year or priority year, uh, um, analysis, we do not look at, at the point in time when a patent has been filed. We look at the point in time when a patent has been active or the patents uh, from one specific corporate portfolio have been active. Uh, and also then here on the y-axis, we're looking at the value of those patents because you could, you might file a patent here in 2002, which can be inactive in 2004 already. And you do not, if you do the, your analysis in 2008, you don't really know what happened to the patent, but uh, with our information about the legal status, you're able to look at the active patents at the end of each reporting date or each year in time. And what we see here is, quite significantly is that Pfizer is dropping massively in patent asset index over time. And um, I guess most of you already heard this, that at the end of 2018, uh, Pfizer announced that they would drop out of uh, the Alzheimer, that they would put not more, uh, more R&D effort in uh, developing effective medicine in the field of Alzheimer. And I would say with, um, or looking at our data, you could have seen that coming way earlier because the decreasing patent asset index is or might be a sign of um, or like a not successful R&D strategy. While for example, Roche is definitely, in, so they're not increasing that much anymore, but since uh, 2007, they're steadily increasing their patent asset index and being the strongest player since uh, the year 2012. All right, um, as promised, um, let's have a look how easily and how fast you could do this uh, in our software. Uh, so um, yeah, let's uh, jump into our software. Um, let me just switch to the browser. Yeah, this card. So let's go to the custom analysis. Analysis, sorry. Um, yeah, so I will just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. I hope that is fine. Um, yeah, so this is basically how our software looks like. I will open this also so you can see more charts here. So here on the left side, you can search for patents. You can isolate patents. 
um, for using different filter options like the owner filter, IPC class, uh, also authority filters. Um, I like to say isolate patterns because you can then search for those patterns and then do uh, analytics based on this pattern. So for example, I could search, we already have seen Rosh is the strongest player. I can search for Rosh here and then do have a look at the strategic position of Rosh in a few seconds. Also, the great thing about the software, all the data we're working at is active. I can mouse over um, data and data points to get further information. For a really nice example here is when I click on this owner Rosh, um, uh, I get a company info box about Rosh. So I see the key indicators from our point of view about Rosh. I see um, a country focus. I see a selection of top patterns and also a slider, which I really like. Um, I see um, prior and subsequent art to the Rosh portfolio. So um, I, at a glance, uh, I get an idea about the competitive and also te technological environment about Roche. Okay, so um, now the whole uh, thing is not only about Roche, um, it's about a peer group or uh, Alzheimer in general. And um, so I would like to look at all the patterns in Alzheimer. Um, I could for example, uh, use a search tool to identify, I could also use the, our tool here, but I could also use a search tool to identify all those patterns and also um, have a look at sub portfolios here. Um, the problem is, or the, the, the thing is about these owner filters here, you can't really change anything here yourself, but we have a, a function which is called tagging, which makes you available or which enables you um, to define groups of patterns by your own. So you attach a little flag, a little tag to, your pat uh, to a patent family or a patent in our system and then can search for these tags and then also group your charts, your visualization by this tag, which is really, really useful and gives you a lot of flexibility in the tool. So let's have a look um, at um, um, a patent list. Uh, you could retrieve, for example, um, from, um, from a search tool. Um, we have the document numbers here um, and also uh, within the field of Alzheimer, um, we um, or the, the, uh, the patent office, which we rely our analytics on, um, they identified a few sub-technology fields, which are biologics, diagnostic, genetic, engineering, medical treatment and pharmaceuticals. And now I would like to upload all these document numbers and also attach this information about the technology field to the patent families I'm looking at. So I did this with this hashtag here, which will generate a tag in our system. I simply take all of this, copy it, sorry for the German, copy all of this, go back to the software. Then I go to import here in the main toolbar, tag patents in bulk, throw everything in here. And then the system works a little bit. So keep in mind that we're currently updating over 16,000 patent families to the system, uh, which might take a while. So now we get a search re matching result. I'll go one step further. And now uh, the system will attach to all these patent families um, or search for all the document numbers filter out the uh, specific patent family and uh, will attach the tag to this patent family. And um, yeah, it's like 16,000 patent families. So um, I hope it doesn't take too long. It's quite a big number. Time for me to drink something. General effect, usually it's a lot faster. There we go. So usually it's a little bit faster, um, but I think it was like less than 20 seconds, which is still quite acceptable for uh, uploading over uh, 60,000 uh, document numbers in our system. 
All right, so let's uh, open a new sheet here. Uh, I will delete the filter and now I search for this text or these texts I just created. Go to tag here on uh, the search area and here I see Alzheimer IP and here I see all the texts I just created. I will just use Alzheimer IP, refresh, looking at all the companies and now I just have a look at the quality versus quantity chart once again. So uh, here, once again, I see Roche is the strongest player. Just let me exclude uh, the legend here. So um, I see Roche strongest player. So currently we're looking at from the current reporting date, which is the 4th of April, uh, 2019. Um, and um, you see how easy it is to get these results in our system and how quick that is. Um, yeah, um, all right. And also, of course, you can exclude and include all the companies you want to have a look at. So you can simply go to the chart settings, the bubbles. Let me just deselect all and just have a look at the ones uh, from the teaser here. So now we have Sanofi and uh, Eli Lilly. And um, also in these bubble charts, you can have a look at the trends of those portfolios by simply going to chart settings and inserting the bubble trails, how these portfolios have developed over time. So now it's a lot of information. Let me just include a time slider. So we are looking at only looking at the last um, eight years uh, and also until the year 2018, because uh, we only have April and there's probably a lot of information to come uh, for the reporting date in 2019. And now we see how these companies developed um, over time uh, in comparison to each other. So um, while um, Eli Lilly uh, kept its um, portfolio size stable over time, they were able to increase in competitive impact. So it seems like they're doing something really good in the field of Alzheimer. Um, Sanofi, in contrast, is decreasing their portfolio size. Uh, in Alzheimer, in that specific field. They're losing a little bit uh, in uh, competitive impact. However, they still have a competitive impact of 3.3, which is already really good to put that in words. Uh, the average um, Sanofi pattern in the field of Alzheimer is 3.3 times as relevant as the average pattern in Alzheimer, which is already really good. But it seems like Sanofi is focusing rather on, on different topics. Uh, where they're stronger. So when I'm looking at this chart here, of course, I would like to know what is what is Eli Lilly doing? What are they good at? Do they have a specific focus uh, on, on some sub-technology fields? And also, this is really, really easy. I can simply click here on Eli Lilly, get further information for each bubble, but I can also do a drill down. Drill down to template here. Then you see a new sheet has opened. The filter has been uh, adjusted accordingly. And um, I will go to charts. Um, just if I have this in, yes, I do have this in my last used uh, visualizations. Um, so we only see 29 pattern families now here. And um, now I'm looking at where does Eli Lilly has its focus on, on which subfields. So you, you can upload the information from this Excel sheet. You can you're totally flexible, can upload this to our system and then have a look where are most of the pattern files, which is the gray bar here. And also you can have a look at the pattern asset index of those patterns. So the, the strength of those patterns. And what we see here that most of the patterns are filed or belong to pharmaceuticals. Um, by the way, patterns can be assigned to um, both um, technology fields here. But also we see that the patents in, in the subfield of pharmaceuticals are the strongest patents, have the uh, highest average quality, which you can see from the relation of patent asset index to portfolio size. And of course, you can also go one step ahead, one step further down, go on a patent level. For example, you might be interested now in Eli Lilly um, seems to be really good in pharmaceuticals, but also di uh, diagnostics. They have five patents here, so it's definitely worth having a look at those patents. So I can do a drill down here, 
drill down to templates, and here we have our newly developed result list. So you can have a look at those patterns. They're listed here, sorted by pattern asset index. So darker it is, the stronger this pattern is. And um, you can have a look at the drawings here. It's currently loading. Um, you also have direct access to the full text data here. So you will see all the pattern family listed here. Uh, it's currently loading the, the PDFs, um, um, our indicators. And also what I really like is uh, the legal status. So you see the countries where a pattern is active or pending or even inactive in. And at a glance, you can see what is prior and subsequent art to this patent. So um, for example, you can also uh, expand all of this and then have a look. So Eli Lilly is doing some self citations here, but also University of Zurich is building on this pattern, H. Lundbeck is building on this pattern and so on. Um, now I think it just loaded. So here you get uh, a screen. Um, so here we're showing uh, some uh, chemical um, formulas for this patent. Um, um, so you can have a look at this. You can directly um, get access to full text data and have a look um, at those patents. Yes, so uh, you, you see how easy it is coming from a really comprehensive full text search, going to the software, identifying here. I think that's a, re a much nicer example what we're currently looking at. So you see how easy it is to get like a from, from comprehensive full text search to identify who the top players are, who has the biggest portfolio, who is the strongest portfolio, but also who has the highest average quality to understanding it in, in what kind of subfields, if you have that information to what kind of subfields um, um, this, this technology strength is split up. And then you can directly go to the deepest level, which is the patent family, the document level, and actually have a look or understanding why is a company that strong? What are these specific patents um, um, a company is building on and generating their um, portfolio strength from? All right, um, that it is for today. Um, I'm really happy that you joined me today. Um, we will gather your questions, um, answer them, uh, and send them out uh, together with um, a download uh, link to the slides and also to the recording uh, from today. And um, yeah, looking, looking forward for your questions, um, my, maybe as a contact. Um, um, Andreas Libering can contact me anytime if you have questions um, regarding these, uh, this analysis. And um, yeah, once again, Thank you very much for joining uh, the session today and um, I will close it now and wish all of you uh, a great day and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Goodbye.